Hi, my name is Ashley Roding. And I'm Rachel Katzman, and we're both first year pharmacy students at the Yukon School of Pharmacy. Today, we're going to be presenting on dextromethorphan and why you need to show your ID when you purchase it. So to get started, what is dextromethorphan? So it's also known as dextro, DXM, or DM. So you might hear us refer to it as that throughout these slides. And the main purpose of dextromethorphan is to be a cough suppressant. So cough suppressants are also commonly known as antitussives. And DXM helps you stop coughing and de can decrease the frequency of your coughs. It is available over the counter, so you don't need a prescription to purchase it. You can just find it right in the aisles at your local pharmacy. And it's available in multiple forms, such as liquids, suspensions, syrups, capsules, lozenges, and strips. So what medicines contain dextromethorphan? And it's not just syrup as it's commonly thought of as, it can actually be in a lot of different products as just mentioned. So dextromethorphan is contained in over 125 individual products. You can look for the DM on certain OTC or over-the-counter products. So if you look on the left, there's mucinex DM, Robitussin DM, but just to note, not all dextro uh, containing OTCs list the DM. So you can see quercetin, Dayquil, NyQuil, Delcium, none of them have the DM, but they do contain dextromethorphan. A quick way to look is to look on the back at, in the active ingredients on a box and it'll say dextromethorphan or not. So how does dextromethorphan work? So it works in the brain by raising the cough reflux threshold. And there are multiple sites of action, which are the NDMA receptors, sigma-1 receptors, and nicotinic receptors. These receptors, the NDMA, sigma-1, and nicotinic, are found in your brain. So if you see on the diagram, there's uh, a circle around the cough center in your brain. So DXM is going to be working on these receptors in your brain. And it's basically going to raise your threshold, uh, your cough reflux threshold, and this means you're just going to cough less. And dextromethorphan is a derivative of morphine but to note, it is not an opiate. And there are no pain reduction properties with DXM. Also on the bottom, there is the structure of DXM. Dextromethorphan was first approved in 1958 by the FDA as a brand name Romilar. In 1973, it was removed from the market due to recreational abuse. It was reintroduced as a liquid form that manufacturers purposely made unpleasant tasting to prevent abuse. However, because of the unpleasant taste, sales plummeted. So in the 1990s, manufacturers began reintroducing liquid formulations that tasted better along with gel tabs and tablets. Now let's talk about the laws associated with dextromethorphan. In 2006, the Dextromethorphan Distribution Act of 2006 was enacted. This law prevented the distribution of unfinished dextromethorphan. This means that Dextromethorphan cannot be sold unless it is in its finished dosage form, such as in tablets, capsules, or syrups. In 2010, the FDA voted against making dextromethorphan a scheduled medication. Scheduled medications are medications that the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, has flagged as high abuse medications. In 2019, representatives wanted to amend the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to include dextromethorphan abuse prevention. However, it is still in process. So as of today, dextromethorphan remains a federally unscheduled medication and regulations are determined by each individual state's laws. So let's talk about dextromethorphan abuse. So when taken at the correct dose, DXM is safe, non-addictive and has very few side effects. So to figure out the correct dose, you should always read the product's package and follow the dosing directions provided. Also, if you ever have any questions about correct dosing, you can always go to your pharmacist. But however, when DXM is purposely abused and consumed in higher doses than indicated, intoxicating side effects can occur. And this is what leads to abuse. So to note, the table on the left that I'm gonna talk through indicates doses that DXM abusers took for the purpose of experiencing intoxicating effects. The actual maximum dosage of DXM for adults is about 120 milligrams per day. Again, you should always look at the packaging to get the exact amount that you should be taking for the individual product. And also to note, children require a lower dose than adults. That's dependent on their age and the dosage form of DXM. And again, always refer to your pharmacist if you have any questions about dosing for young children. And so on the left, 
So this basically um, takes long-term DXM abusers and their reported effects and correlates it with the dose that they took. So it's been reported that about 100 to 200 milligrams creates mild simulation, 200 to 400 milligrams creates euphoria and hallucinations, 300 to 1500 grams distorted visual perceptions, loss of motor coordination and out of body sensations. So when someone's abusing DXM, they're taking it in order to get these effects and have the hallucinations, euphoria, stimulation, all of that. There are several street names that dextromethorphan can go by. DXM is using products containing dextromethorphan to get high. Some terms related to liquid formulations are robofizzing, which is combining cloth medicine with soda or alcohol, lean, which is shown here in the picture, which is a combination of prescription cough syrup containing codeine, soda, and sometimes hard candy. There's syrup head, which is who, someone who uses cough syrup or other products with dextromethorphan, codeine, or promethazine to get high. Robotripping refers to hallucin hallucinogenic trips that people experience at high doses. Terms related to tablet and capsule formulations are triple Cs, CCC, Red Hots, and Skittlein. And it's because the brand name medication, Coracetin, which contains dextromethorphan, has similar shape and size to these candies. So adolescents are the most likely age group to abuse dextromethorphan, and we'll get into that a bit on the next slide. So why do adolescents abuse dextromethorphan? So a few reasons. DXM is fairly inexpensive. There's also no prescription required, meaning you can take it right off the shelves to buy it. And DXM can easily be concealed as a normal cough and cold product because in its form, it is used as a cough and cold product. So this is an easy way for adolescents to hide it from their parents, people at school, their friends, et cetera. According to a six-year retrospective review that compared DXM abuse trends in California to nationwide trends, there was a 15-fold increase of abuse in adolescents during the six-year period. And this was markedly higher than the 10-fold increase of abuse they found in the overall population. So this is why laws restric restricting DXM sales are for 18 plus. And that's why it's important to prevent abuse because adolescents are the most at-risk group for DXM. So the 18 plus age limit is logical because it gets through um, the adolescent age range and gets into adults, which is the 18 plus. So this is why you have to show your ID to buy DXM in certain states. As you know, a lot of dangerous trends and challenges occur on social media. There is one TikTok called Sleepy Chicken where chicken is marinated in a bottle of NyQuil and then eaten. People do this to get feelings of euphoria, but is also causes abuse and the potential to overdose. And so we just wanted to end this by saying, if you or a friend are in crisis and need to speak with someone, there are a lot of really good resources. There's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and they don't just talk about suicide, they go over a lot of different issues like the XM, and they can put you in touch with someone close by. There's also the National Institute on Drug Abuse, um, and there's a link to the step-by-step -step guide for teens and young adults with abuse. So there are a lot of resources if you or someone you know needs help. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you found it informative.